Hello everyone and welcome to Deadbeat. I am Uncle Bill, the fuck are you? My name is a Pepe Le Pew. And tonight, we're going to talk about eyes with any face, I'm about. Are you ready for a plate full of snails? <laughs> Pepe? <laughs> Did you say a plate full of snails? So what you fucking yeah. saying? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ginny Poopy Pot and Gingry Poopy. Would you like some cabinet stuff in your drink? Or perhaps a nice Chardonnay? Don Parion from 1945. It was my grandpapa's. We have an excellent wine cellar for your selection. A 1952 Poopy. Poopy Avati. <laughs> this is the Poopy Avati Select. Chardonnay the one. Uh. Eyes Without a Face, though, is a 1960 film that we're going to review. It is a French film for reals, though, directed by Ole Frangi. Georges. It stars Pierre Blatzny. In a little valley. <laughs> and the Pepe La Pie. Yeah. It's we're actually a pretty good if, movie, though. If we have Honestly. any Fr French uh, listeners, they're going to really fucking hate us now. Yeah, I don't think we do, though, for some reason. <laughs> they're getting it translated so, into French. This one was requested from our good pal, Demal, who has introduced us to some... Really killer movies over the years. I want to give him credit. Uh, it's been a long standing baller and shot caller, which there is still a baller and shot caller spot open on Patreon. If anybody is wanting to upgrade their membership, now is one of the rare times when you can do that. This has been the longest we've had an open spot in uh, ever since we started, I think. Well, that just says a lot about us. We ain't worth a shit. <laughs> But DeMile's always throwing these movies that we normally wouldn't watch our way. And this one is one that I had heard of numerous times. I think Jason Schneeberger, one of our good buddies from back in the golden years of Dead Pit, uh, Beyond the Realms on YouTube, one that he recommended to us a long, long time ago. Eyes Without a Face from 1960. It's very French. It's from France. <laughs> it um, is. Georges Franju was the director. And it was a movie. I think this movie's way ahead of its time um, for the time that came out very early. If you really think about it, this is one of the earlier examples of body horror, Uncle Bill. Yeah. Maybe one of those movies that inspired a young David Cronenberg back in 1960. I can imagine that this movie freaked a whole hell of a lot of people out in 1960, man. Like, good Lord. Like, some of the sequences in it with the makeup effects are pretty good, even for, like, today. Like, when the the doctor is removing, like, one of the faces and it shows, like, you know, him going underneath the skin with the scalpel and kind of pushing it up. I mean, that's pretty wow. good, even for today's standards. And, like, in 1960, I bet people were shitting their pants. Oh yeah, for sure. Very graphic as well. Like there's a couple of different cuts of this movie too. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but yeah, as far as the version that we saw, I'm not sure if that version was ever shown in the United States or anything, because this was, dude, think about this. This was 1960. So what kind of graphic stuff was shown at all on any theater or you know, definitely not in the home or anything. Um, but this one, this movie begins with a woman disposing of a young girl's body. And we really don't know what's up at all at this point. Or as the French like to call it, le body. <laughs> le tomb. Le tomb of the dead. The next day we meet up with kind of the lead character, Dr. Genesia. That's how I pronounce it. Genesia. Okay. 
Dr. Frenchy Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Frenchy Martin, if he was in this. This would have been excellent. Uh-huh. But <clears throat> anyway, D- Dr. Genasia is kind of got, you get the sense that he's kind of got like a Frankenstein complex. He's obsessed with, you know, preserving bodies and reusing bodies or whatever else you get that from this speech that he's given or whatever and he's recently had his young daughter has gone missing and they call from the morgue what would be the french for the morgue the morgue <laughs> yeah le morgue you know some french words are similar to english words did you notice that in watching the movie There's hello couple, yeah. hello hello say that they found a, the woman's body. I guess it's the same one that the woman was disposing of earlier in the movie. And he goes to identify it as his daughter, but it is not his daughter. He knows who this woman is. And he has been conducting experiments where he is transplanting faces uh, onto his daughter in hopes to... I mean, she's disfigured from a car wreck or something, right? Isn't that right. So what it was? Re, they want to re, you know, attach a face to her that's like similar to the face that she had before. So they, that's the kind of like women that they're looking for. And in the meantime, uh, they've got her wearing like this really creepy ass, just kind of blank mask that goes over, you know, her scarring and everything, which uh, John Carpenter has in the past said was like uh, kind of an inspiration for the mask and Halloween too. And you can kind of tell that by the way, cause it's just a blank kind of emotionless. It's face. almost like you get the feeling that they're wanting to make it look like a porcelain face of some sort, like yeah. porcelain doll. Yeah. It looks very real too. I mean, like it looks like a, a real, I think now I'm not sh- for certain on this. But I think that that is a sculpt of that actress's actual face. Well, that would make sense, yeah. Um, and then they laid it on there because it fits perfect on her face. Like, yeah, for that time period, like I'm not sure who did the effects or anything on it, but yeah, I mean that was very very effective and creepy look um, at the time, and this was kind of a compassionate character is not really supposed to be a scary character. Um, and I thought it was one of those deals where you wouldn't see her face, her actual face until the very end of the movie, but pretty soon you actually see your scarred up face. And even that looked really good. Um, yeah. For yeah the time the frame. effects for that were really good. Yeah. There's a whole like sequence where, the daughter is just kind of roaming around this big ass house and, and just, she's not content with, you know, her life or really anything that's going on or like what they're trying to do or anything like that. And, um, he's got like the, the doctor has like, I don't know what you would call it. Like, um, helper or something. That's like trying to help him find women that look like his daughter and then she will like lure them back to the house and then, you know, the the ones that, that they find and yep. then he'll perform the surgeries, which that's what I was talking about earlier. The surgeries where like they're taking the face off um, are actually really well filmed, especially for that time period. But even like for today's standards, there's only one shot, which they could have done with that, which is where they when after they removed the face. It looks like somebody just smeared like fucking Hershey syrup on their face. That's what it was. Yeah. They use chocolate yeah. syrup on those black and white movies. Yeah. But yeah. There's a shot too, where after the face is kind of skinned and they're lifting that even looked good. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and I mean, I, my wife even said, and she's really picky about these old movies. She was like, wow. Because this is obviously an old, old movie. Um, was 19, it's 64 years old at this point. Um, and it's true. It's crazy. I think it's, I like, guess definitely not an underrated movie. I don't think, but at the same time, I don't know if it's one that people really reference a whole lot. 
This has got Criterion written all over it. I mean, it's very artistic. I'm right? sure. Didn't Criterion do a, a version of this? I'm sure. Yeah, they, they did the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray yeah. of uh, this one is out. Um, but man, some of the pretentiousness from Criterion just really pisses me off because so this movie and I was doing some a uh, little bit of research on this, the most I normally do, uh, just a Google search. So. I was curious about the American version of this, which was released in 1962 as a double feature with the Manster, which sounds like a fucking He-Man figure. This was retitled the horror chamber of Dr. Faustus and the operation scenes were edited out of it hmm. and it was dubbed in English. So there is an English dub for this movie or at least a version of it and man like i understand we harp on this all the time but nine times out of ten i would rather listen to in english where i don't have to focus on reading the fucking movie the entire time and it really just pisses me off that criterion did not put that cut of the movie on I mean, if they're all about extras and shit, I would want the U.S. version of the movie out That's that's got the dub on it. There's only a really crappy quality version on Daily Motion of the horror chamber of Dr. Faustus, which is the U.S. version. And it really just, it, that sort of thing pisses me off because they're fucking, they're movie nerds. Um, everybody that checks these sort of shows out are movie nerds, but they're so fucking like full of their own shit and sniffing their own farts that that man, to me, I would be interested in checking that version out. I don't want to read these fucking movies. No, I mean, I kind of agree with you. Like there's nothing more annoying than when I get, like I bought a couple of, uh, of these cat three films and, at least one of them doesn't have a uh, English dub. So it's like, and I'm trying to like do other shit when I'm watching these, it, you know, a lot of the times like I'm working and, and watching these it's, and I don't want to fucking like just dedicate my whole focus right. to trying to read like what's going on while I'm trying to do the other things. I just want to have something going in the background that I can like, you know, watch. And I don't like that either. But then at the same time, like some of these dubs are fucking god awful. Like the voice actors that they use, I'd almost rather like <laughs> just hear the regular actors because they're so bad. Like, right? It's really, it's really bad. And I tell you, like one of the worst examples of that too is some of those early Bruce Lee films because I got that Golden Harvest set. Um, mm -hmm. Those early Bruce Lee films are some of the worst for like who they would use to dub those films and especially for Bruce Lee, because the whole gimmick with Bruce Lee was that he had the, you know, he made the sounds and shit when he fought and that's taken out. You know, you, when you watch the, with the subtitles, it's in there, but when you go to the audio, that like, cut for the U S or whatever, like all those are out. And that's really like an exception to the rule, I think. But sometimes right. like those aren't, those dubs aren't even worth it. But, but anyway, Getting back to the movie, though, Eyes Without a Face from 1960. I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. I actually really like black and white movies from this time period anyway, or TV shows or anything like this. From, like, the late 50s to the early 60s, there's a ton of classic TV shows, stuff like that, that I kind of grew up with. So this kind of reminds me of that, even though it's, it's French and I can't understand anything these fucking people are saying. Yeah. But it's very well made. The graveyard scenes in particular, very spooky, atmospheric type stuff. I had a lot of fun with it. I think, I definitely think it's a classic. Um, I just really wish that if Criterion were to do a 4K or something of it, that they would offer up a remastered version of that US. Even though it's, you know, edited down and everything. Make the make the dubs available for people that just, I don't want to fucking focus on reading a movie the entire time. Like maybe I've seen too many, uh, of these lately, but yeah, I mean, that's just really like, you know, sometimes you don't have time to do that. 
I think that like it's way ahead of its time for one thing. Uh like light years ahead of its time. It it's very like gothic kind of like feel to it. Um but as well it's got some like really graphic scenes in it that you just did absolutely did not see around that time period. Um and this movie even now that I think about it, man, it predates shit like, you know, Night of Living Dead and stuff like that. Right. And I think the the gore scenes in this are probably a lot more severe than the gore in Night of Living Dead, for that matter. The music in this is pretty good, too. Like, I kind of got into the, I guess there was a main theme in it that was kind of annoying but catchy at the same time. It was like a circus theme or something, yeah. almost. Like, some sort of weird, yeah. Uh, and the score is very kind of... I like scores like that, though, where they don't really necessarily follow the same pattern as a lot of horror films where they're kind of a little bit off. And this is definitely one of those, those scores, but the ending of the movie is exactly the type of ending that you would want this kind of movie to be right. or to have. And, uh, well, there's another aspect of it too, that we didn't mention. Like this guy uses, he has a gigantic kennel, uh, I think under his house or near his house, and he uses these dogs to do experiments on as well. Yeah. And that kind of catches up with him towards the end of the movie and is pretty cool. For that time period, I thought it was a pretty cool ending. Yeah, it is a really good ending. It's very satisfying yeah. ending in that way too. And yeah, big shout out to our buddy William, aka Demal, who always picks these movies out. And this is the thing that's fun, man, because you could really get stuck taking a look at the fucking Halloween movies 87 times or the Friday the 13th movies yeah. or whatever, you know, Hellraiser, review Stephen King movies all day. But like getting to do some of these fan requested reviews on stuff that we had, I had heard of this one, but some stuff that we'd never heard of, never reviewed before. You know, I think that's it. Yeah, you know, it's definitely refreshing. So I don't mind doing that at all. I just wish some oh. of these movies were in English. Yeah. And there's one really great scene in this too that like is super heavy this time where they have like a time lapse um photo of like when the skin graph stuff doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And so they show, you know, like her with the face on at first, and then like somebody's doing the makeup effects, which are killer for that time period, especially where it's kind of like falling down and yeah. like rotting it definitely off. Looks, where, yeah. It looks legit. Yeah. It's just great. Like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's probably not a movie that like our audience necessarily would go in for. Um, cause of the time period of it, you know, and everything too, but it's a, it's a good movie. It really is. It is on HBO max in HD or max or whatever the hell they call it now. Um, so that's where I watched it and beautifully made movie. I really like this movie a lot. Um, so yeah, the eyes without a face oh, from the director of Pepe Le Pew. Cool. Oh, it's George's, George's Franjo. Oh. Hey, George's. <laughs> Frick. So there's that. There's that. Give us the thumbs up. Off you butts. Like, subscribe. And if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a fuck. Ooh. I want you to. I want you to. <laughs> Let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, I need to do that. No, don't you yeah. do it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpits.com. Simply the best horror shirts on T Public. There are others. But they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The Hills Have Eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're gonna love them. 
shop.deadpit.com. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears start at only $1. We ain't-